Amen. I'm so glad to see you today. Go ahead and have a seat. If you have your Bible or Bible app, you're going to want to grab it and you'll turn to Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 26. Now we're continuing in our Son of God series from the Gospel of Luke. So for the remainder of 2022, we are going to be in the Gospel of Luke. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, uh, go ahead and grab one of the Bibles located under the seats in front of you and you'll find Luke chapter 8 on page 1000. And as always, if you don't have a Bible that you can read or understand easily, you should have no excuse after today. We have plenty of Bibles. We want you to take one of those Bibles at home with you. Make it your own, write your name in it, and begin to read it and apply it to your life. And if you're looking for life change, if you're looking for hope, if you're feeling overwhelmed, as you read God's Word and you begin to apply it, you're going to discover God is going to change your life. We want to welcome our Parker campus that's joining us today. So on a count of three, we're all going to cheer for our Parker campus. One, two, three. Parker, we're so glad that you guys are there. We're excited about what God is doing. And if you don't have a Bible, you can jump up and grab one in the back of the room uh, right there in Alumni Hall. We're excited about all that the Lord is doing in and through you guys. Now, I don't know about you, and I don't know what things made you scary, uh, scared when you were a child, but the passage of Scripture that we're going to be looking at today is a little frightening. In fact, it reminds me of my childhood when I was afraid of certain Hollywood characters, uh, certain Hollywood fictional characters that were created by Hollywood that I would be afraid of. Uh, At night, sometimes my imagination would take over. And whether I was sleeping in my bed or whether I was walking down the road, I would see in the darkness the faces of Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Mike Myers, Norman Bates, I would see these guys as, you know, just kind of taking shape, whether it was a tree or a shrub or a dark shadow. My imagination was so active that as I just stared intently thinking I just saw it move, it would slowly turn into the face of one of those creepy night stalker bad guys and it would freak me out. There were times that I would I was so serious that I saw something that like that, I'd stop breathing. I'd just take a minute, my breath would, would disappear from my lungs, and in a few moments I'd, I'd gasp because I realized I wasn't even breathing. I was so afraid. I really thought that Freddie was going to get me. I really thought he was going to reach out of the shadows with his long fingertip knives and grab me and hurt me. Today's scripture passage can read a lot like uh, a Stephen King novel. Today's passage of scripture uh, contains demonic possession, cemetery, graveyard, chains, shackles, uh, sharp rocks, bloodiness, screaming and howling at the moon. So in Luke chapter 8, Luke describes Jesus' encounter with a demon-possessed man And in Mark chapter 5, Mark also describes this account. And what I'm going to do as I read from Luke chapter 8 is I'm going to add one of the verses from Mark 5, 5. Now, I'm going to be very clear. I'll let you know when I'm going to add that scripture in there. But I just want to provide that for context so we get a full grasp of the situation and what was happening. Out of curiosity... Did any of you get freaked out when you were a teenager over somebody scary or a movie that you'd seen and your imagination gets active? Okay, raise your hand so I don't feel alone. Thank you. Because I get scared when I feel alone and that's not a pleasant thing. So we're going to read from Luke chapter 8. And if you want to look at Mark chapter 5, you're welcome to do that as well. But I'm only reading one verse from there. Luke chapter 8. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. Mark 5 verse 5 says about this man, day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. 
going back to verse 28 now. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him and he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to, to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned." The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Now, if this is your first time reading this passage of scripture, you're gonna, uh, I'm going to be in agreement with you. This is a bizarre story. We've got demons and we got pigs and we got pigs drowning and we got the, the townspeople begging Jesus to go someplace else, even when they saw a miracle occur. And in case it's not obvious, uh, let me point out everything that this man had going against him. Number one, he was demon possessed. He was naked, he was homeless, and he lived inside a cemetery. He wandered around the cemetery day and night, howling and cutting himself with sharp rocks. And the people that he knew, the faces that he knew, he only knew them because they would grab him and they would chain him because the people in the town were afraid of this guy. I mean, this was essentially the boogeyman. This was the guy that gave children nightmares. The townspeople would grab him and chain him down, yet he was so strong and so fierce and so possessed by the demons that he would break the chains and the shackles and just continue to terrify everybody that could hear him. He had problems. Regardless of the difficulties or the challenges that you may feel in life, this man has you beat. You know how I know that? Every one of you are sitting in your right mind and you have clothes on right now. I mean, you are already so much better than this guy was. You can at least read this passage of scripture and say, I've got problems, but not like him. So if you feel chained down, if you feel like you can't get over your past, if your struggles continue to resurface day and night, if you don't feel like you can overcome your hurt from your past, like this demon-possessed man, I want you to know you can live free. Now, I understand that this passage is a little troubling and there's a lot of content in here, especially when we consider this man was demon possessed. He was controlled by the devil and he was filled with demons. Now, I want to be very clear. If you're a follower of Jesus, you cannot be demon possessed. 
If you're a follower of Jesus, let me say that again because a lot of people don't understand that. If you are a follower of Jesus, you cannot be possessed by demons. Once you become a follower of Jesus, once a person has surrendered their life to Jesus, once they've received Jesus as their savior, once they've committed their lives to him, the Bible tells us that those individuals have been born again. They've been made new. They have the Holy Spirit now living in them. A follower of Jesus cannot be demon possessed because we're already possessed by the Spirit of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is already alive in you. And so you cannot be controlled by the devil. But I do believe that a follower of Jesus can begin to believe the lies of the devil and live just as this man lived confused, isolated, and powerless. I believe that a lot of believers, a lot of followers of Jesus live under the influence of evil because they believe the lies. As we looked at this uh, last week, just kind of a reminder, the devil hates God and the devil hates followers of Jesus and keeping people in bondage is a priority of the devil. Keeping people in bondage is a priority for the devil. In verse 30, we see Jesus asking this man a very simple question. It doesn't get any more simple than this. Jesus looked at the man and in verse 30, he said, what is your name? Now that's a question that I could answer. That's a question I would love to have on a test. Like, what's your name? Great, give me a hundred points for this. I could answer that. You could answer that question. But the man lived under the influence of the devil and he lived under the influence of evil for so long he did not answer the question correctly. This man's name was not Legion. His real name was some good Jewish name. He was named Thomas or Matthew or Mark or John he, or Judas. He had some type of Jewish name, but he believed the lies of the enemy for so long, he did not understand who he really was. He lived in darkness and he lived in confusion for so long, he had forgotten who he really was. He had forgotten his identity. And understand this, as we look at this passage of scripture and we talk about the, the really the devil's influence in this world and in your life, Jesus characterized the devil in John chapter eight. And he said, the devil, he has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. As a follower of Jesus, you cannot be demon possessed but you can be filled with lies. See, you don't have to believe the discouragement and the despair that creeps into your life. You don't have to believe those nagging thoughts that tell you that you're worthless or you're pathetic or you can't do anything right or you'll never be able to live as a follower of Jesus. You don't have to believe the harsh words of criticism that other people speak into your life. You don't have to believe the whispers of hopelessness and when you're trapped and you're bound by your own sin. That is what the devil would want you to do. That is what sin would want you to do. Believe the truth that just like this demon possessed man, Jesus can set you free from the lies. 
Jesus can set you free from the despair and from the hopelessness. He can free you from the deception of abusive criticism. He can free you from the lies that you have begun to believe about yourself. He can free you from pessimism. He can free you from doubt and negativity and from despair. Jesus can set you free, but only if you really want to be free. Only if you really want him to. See, lots of people profess to be followers of Jesus, but they choose every single day to live in darkness and walk in darkness rather than walking in light. They choose, they choose to live in a world of deception and lie instead of living in a world of truth. They've been set free from the penalty of sin, but they make choices every single day to live imprisoned in their lives. It's like they've been set free from those shackles of sin, but they run and they grab onto them and hang on to them. People as followers of Jesus don't really experience all the change and all the new life that God has planned for them because they run back to what they're comfortable with. So do you do that? Is that something that you personally do? Understand Jesus makes and made your freedom a priority. Do you? Jesus has made your freedom a priority. Do you make your freedom a priority every single day? Now, Jesus went out of his way to encounter this man. You remember the passage of scripture that we looked at last week. If you didn't, you can joke, go back and look at it online. Jesus had just set sail with his disciples. The, the storm came. Jesus was sleeping in the bottom of the boat. There was a, a storm raging. The disciples were afraid. They woke Jesus up. Jesus rebuked the storm and the winds. Guess where Jesus' destination was. This man was Jesus' destination. The whole reason why Jesus set sail in the storm was for this moment, for this encounter. Getting across the water wasn't easy. Jesus made the freedom of this demoniac man his priority. Look at verse 37 again. Look what happened. Jesus healed him. Then the townspeople begged him to leave and Jesus got back in the boat and returned. The whole point of sailing through the darkness and the whole point of sailing through the waves and the trouble was to set this man free. And Jesus has made your freedom a priority too. Jesus went to great lengths to set you free from sin. See, that's what the cross was about. He paid the price. He paid the penalty for our sin on the cross. He went out of his way. He was arrested. He was beaten. He got out of his comfort zone. He was whipped. He was scourged. He was mocked. He was savagely beaten. He was murdered on a cross. And his blood and his broken body paid the penalty for our sins because Jesus made yours and my freedom a priority, even though it came at great personal cost to him. Does your freedom matter as much to you as it does to Jesus? Do you make your freedom a priority every single day? Many of us struggle with hurts, habits, and hangups. Many of us struggle with abuse. Many of us struggle from, uh, from dysfunction from our past. Many of us have walked through divorce or walked through addictions or have felt that sense of hopelessness in our lives. Aren't you ready to recover from that? Aren't you ready to begin to walk and live in freedom? See, if you're really ready and if you really value your freedom as much as Jesus does, you're going to do whatever it takes to be set free. 
Celebrate Recovery is an incredible ministry that meets every Monday night right here in this room, except this coming Monday. But every Monday night after that, they meet right here in this room at 6.30. It, it's so, it was so amazing last week I got to come and just visit and observe and hear story after story after story of people standing up and sharing about how God has brought them through a 12-step recovery program and is setting them free. And it takes work and it takes effort and it takes time to grow into that freed person that they've become but they put in the effort and, and by the way if you're a veteran if you're somebody that has served in the military or maybe you know somebody that serves in the military we have a CR group for them as well if you're carrying the scars of the, the time of your service or from your from your days of service if you're scary uh, if you're carrying some hurt and you're carrying some weight there is a veterans small group as part of our Celebrate Recovery program. Get involved with it. It's other veterans helping each other recover and walk in freedom. Many men and many women have never recovered from the abuse that they experienced as a child. And so oftentimes what happens is they chase what they know. They, they chase broken relationship after broken relationship because they've never fully recovered from their hurt. And so they embrace the only thing and the only lifestyle that they've ever known. Make your freedom a priority. Walk in freedom. Do what it takes, whether it's joining a life group, whether it's being a part of Celebrate Recovery, whether it's reading God's word and applying it to your life. Do what it takes to live by faith and walk in freedom. Make it your priority because Jesus offers abundant life. He offers honesty and love and he offers hope and forgiveness. Love yourself enough to choose freedom and understand this. Jesus has the authority to set you free. Will you let him? Jesus has the authority to set you free. So will you let him set you free? Maybe like this man, you're, you're overcome by darkness. Maybe you're overcome by the darkness of this world. Maybe you're overwhelmed with an, an addiction to anxiety. Or maybe your relationship with your spouse is crumbling and you feel like you're never really going to experience a healthy relationship with them. Maybe you've got a hidden addiction to drugs or maybe an addiction to alcohol or maybe just an addiction to despair and negativity and hopelessness. Throughout the gospel of Luke, what we've looked at so far this year and what we're going to continue to look at in the future, the son of God, Jesus, demonstrates he has authority to set people free. We see it happen over in almost every situation. He demonstrates authority over finances. He, he demonstrates authority over demonic possession. He demonstrates authority over nature when he calms the wind and the rain. He demonstrates authority over the human body by fasting for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. He demonstrates authority over temptation by living 33 years yet never sinning once. He demonstrates uh, authority over the, the laws of physics by simply walking on water, by turning water into wine, by multiplying the loaves and the fishes. Jesus demonstrates authority over the laws of physics. He demonstrates authority over death and life by raising people back from the dead. He demonstrates authority over the law of gravity by ascending into heaven and over sin by paying the penalty for sin through Jesus, death and through him rising from the dead. Understand, there is nothing Jesus cannot do. There is nothing, no addiction, no problem that you face, Jesus is not able to set you free of. And so maybe like this man, 
Maybe you're cowering and you're crying and you're hiding in the darkness. And maybe you've been in the darkness for so long, you've forgotten who you really are. You've forgotten how to live by faith. You've forgotten what it feels like as a follower of Jesus to live victoriously. I, I wanna remind you of who you are and who you belong to. You are not a child of the evil one. You are not a, a child of the father of lies. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are a child of the most high God. So live like it. Step out of the shadows of darkness and shame. John 8, 36, Jesus said, if the son has set you free, you are free indeed. Romans 8, 2, the apostle Paul writes, and he says, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The apostle Paul was writing to Christians, reminding them, look, you have been set free from the power of sin and claim the promise of Romans 6, 22. The apostle Paul writes, now you are free from the power of sin and you've become a slave of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in abundant life. I want you to know and believe Jesus has the authority to set you free. Jesus values your freedom and he's made it a priority because he loves you more than anybody possibly could. There's nobody that loves you like Jesus. He's already crossed the lake to demonstrate that love to you. He's already gone above and beyond. Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrates his love for us in this while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then after you've embraced that belief, after you've accepted that reality that there's nobody that loves you like Jesus and he has the authority and the ability to set you free, go and do what this man did in this passage. Now it's interesting that he begged Jesus, hey, I wanna go follow you. And Jesus said, no, you, no not right now. I want you to go into the town. I want you to go and tell everybody what I have done for you. I want you to go declare to the world around you that I have set you free. And so this, this man who is now clothed in his right mind runs and goes into the town and he lets everybody know what Jesus has done. He lets everybody know he's been changed. He's different. It's radical, but he's not the man that he once was. And Jesus is saying, look, now you've got to go let everybody know. That's what baptism does in today's world. When you've accepted Jesus and you've committed your life to him and you've become a follower of Jesus and he set you free from the penalty of sin, Jesus' words to you is, let everybody around you know. And baptism is a way that we have that tells the whole world, I've been buried with Christ and I've been raised to walk a new life. I'm not the same person that I was. It's a declaration. It's an announcement. It's in agreement with this passage of scripture that, hey, you just want everyone in the world to know what your Jesus has done for you. If you have not yet been baptized since you became a follower of Jesus, tomorrow at 6 p.m. London, uh, on the other side of London Bridge Beach or on the other, anyway, don't ask me for directions. On the other side of the channel, we're going to have a baptism service and I would love for you to be there to celebrate with all those followers of Jesus that are going to be baptized. And I would love for you to be there to say, I'm ready to let my world know that from now on, I'm following Jesus. 
Understand that evil grows in isolation. I, I believe that this man got worse and worse and worse. The more he was kept away from people, the more he was in isolation. I believe his condition worsened. But God grows in community. And God will continue to transform you as you draw near to other people and you get involved in Celebrate Recovery and you get involved in a life group or you get involved in a counseling ministry or you just celebrate and let your community know that you've become a follower of Jesus and that you've been set free from sin. So I encourage you, come on out, celebrate life change with us. And let's just keep following Jesus who do anything for you and for me. Let's pray. God, thank you for this incredible illustration of your love for us, your persistence, your determination that you're going to, to cross rivers, you're going to cross bridges, you're going to do whatever it takes to reach us. And thank you for your great patience with us. Thank you for the kindness that you show to us. And thank you for the freeing, freeing grace of Jesus. Father, it's our prayer that as we look at this passage, Lord, that you would help people continue to walk in freedom. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it gets complicated. And honestly, Lord, sometimes we complicate it, but we don't have to. Help us to live according to your might, according to faith in you, and help us to walk in freedom, whatever that looks like for wherever we're at. In Jesus' name, amen.